Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and I'm looking at a book from Oxford University Press. It's written by uh, Sarah Cockrell, Queen's Counsel, and the title is a long one. It's The Law and Practice of Compelled Evidence in Civil Proceedings. That's the book there. It's a very short book, actually. It's a slim book. Nothing on the back. What you've got in the book itself is a very uh, useful introduction, which sets out what uh, Ms. Cockrell's trying to achieve. I do like the way in which we have little contents at the beginning of each chapter, which assists in what is actually quite a technical area. The index itself is very detailed and something I found extremely helpful. And there are a, a useful number of appendices looking at forms and various other uh, matters, things like council regulations as well, of course, and various other things, the Hague Convention, because this is an international book as well as a book that's directly relevant in our jurisdiction here. We've given it the title on the web and uh, in the journals. Please do look at the more detailed review there. Reluctant Witnesses. Here's an advice and information uh, book that usually takes hours to unearth in terms of the research you need to use to find what you're looking for. So what we've got here is a slim book that gives you very useful tips on where to look very quickly. So for those in civil practice, this specialist practitioner text is a gem in our view. We gather from the introduction that this compact yet detailed work was written by uh, Ms. Cockrell as a time saver for busy barristers, and that's exactly what it is. After all, it does take valuable time, which you often don't have, to look into the documentary aspects of evidence in weighty tomes, relentlessly and painstakingly tracking down footnotes as you go. Well, you don't get that here at all. Obviously, you have got uh, useful footnotes, which I will just show you, but at the end of the day, she's trying to go about this in a really uh, trenchant manner, and I think she succeeds. Um, obviously, she alludes uh, to the fact that you may still not get to grips in any adequate depth with the real issues that can arise in the process of obtaining evidence, especially from reluctant or uncooperative witnesses that we know about them. There are, of course, parties for whom the word compelled evidence must be procured, often when, and especially when, documentation is not supplied voluntarily and you then have to go through discovery. The book, therefore, fills, in our view, a bit of a yawning gap in the spectrum of legal texts. It appears to be, as far as we're aware, the only book of reference available dedicated to advising litigants and their advisers as to how to obtain and present evidence from reluctant witnesses with an I-don't-wish-to-get-involved attitude. So she's collected a lot of information from sources, which I think is of great help. And the forward by um, Mr Justice Andrew Smith is particularly helpful, so do read that. The book's divided into three parts. The first two cover, respectively, the law and procedures um, relating to this area of evidence, and the third consists of the seven appendices, including CPR Part 34. Additionally, the book contains the relevant tables of cases and legislation which are particularly pertinent to this uh, subject matter. And we think the book deserves an A rating for its usefulness, and we think it's fair to say that no busy civil practitioner should, not, uh, should be without it, because clearly it's something that will be of extreme help, especially if you're pressured, uh, as quite often is the case where you have not been able to get the sort of facilities you want to get the information you want. So can I thank Sarah Cockrell, Queen's Council, and Oxford University Press for presenting something which is extremely valuable to us as practitioners? Thank you very much. Bye-bye.